cool. And we figured out who was sharing. Good. I am. Yes. Okay. All right, we're live on Facebook. Okay. I'm just trying to get to the slideshow part. Okay. Um, we've got some people in the chat. Can we let them in? Hi everyone, thanks for coming today. We're gonna just give it a few minutes for people to get connected and into the room and comfortable. Had a few more people trickling in. What do you think, Jalisa? Are you ready? Yep, I think so. Okay. Hi, everyone. Thanks for joining us today uh, for our Tech Tuesday over the lunch hour. Um, today, we're going to be talking about assistive technology for gardening. Um, go to the next slide here. Just a little bit about who we are. Um, we are from Michigan Disability Rights Coalition and from the Michigan Assistive Technology Program. Um, every state and territory has a, an assistive technology program and um, MDRC is the home of the Michigan Assistive Technology Program. My name is Laura Hall. I go by she, her, hers are my pronouns. Um, I am a person who uses a power wheelchair, I have cerebral palsy, um, take a lot of pride in my disability. I am not a master gardener. I'm not even, I don't, I don't even think I'm a, a very good gardener, but I'm, I'm a person with a disability who loves to garden. Um, and so I am certainly by no means an expert in this area, but um, I've learned a lot um, as we've been gardening, as I've been gardening over the last season, and I'm excited to share some things with you along with Jalisa. Jaleesa, do you want to introduce yourself? Yes. So I'm Jaleesa Irwin. My pronouns are she, her, and hers. Um, I am the MATP Outdoor Recreation Specialist at MDRC. And today I'm wearing a blue shirt and my hair is up in a messy bun. And each needs our chat moderator for today. That means she's going to help us um, keep things moving in the chat so everyone's able to share and hear what's going on. Uh, Ejeanne, do you want to introduce yourself? 
Yes, thank you, Laura. Um, my name is Asian A, and I am the MATP Youth um, Specialist here at MDRC, and I am wearing a orange sweater, and I have black frame glasses, and I am a brown skin with brown hair pulled into a back ponytail. Hi, everyone. And I don't know if I did a, a visual description. I'm a white woman I'm with shoulder length brown hair and dark room glasses. Today I'm wearing a burgundy top. Okay, going to the next slide. Okay. All right, so here at MDRC, our mission is that MDRC cultivates disability pride, strengthens the disability movement by recognizing disability as a natural and beautiful part of human diversity while collaborating to dismantle all forms of oppression. And this really shows in all of the work that we do. Um, Yep. So, yes. Most of the people um, who work on our program are people with disabilities. So we like to say that our services are for people with disabilities, by people with disabilities. Um, we're proud of having disabilities and um, are proud to share the AT that we also use. Okay. So Michigan Assistive Technology Program, or also known as MATP, um, that's what we do. So assistive technology is any item, piece of equipment, software, or system that is used to help people with disabilities, including older adults do what they want to do. Um, we provide AT related supports around the entire state. And we normally do this by doing hands-on demonstrations of AT devices. Uh, we make sure that there's awareness of information. We do trainings. Uh, we have a loan program. And if there's any items that you may need, uh, you can go to the atexchange.org for these items. Our loan program is in um, partnership with the United Cerebral Palsy of Michigan. Uh, this is a financial loan program. Um, to provide uh, financial loans specifically for the purchase of assistive technology. And as, um, as Jaleesa shared, our AT exchange is kind of like a Craigslist for AT related um, used equipment. So if you've got equipment that you're looking to sell or donate, um, you can connect with people that are looking for that equipment. And it's a good way uh, for used equipment to uh, change hands. And to request a demo with us or a short-term loan, um, we do a, a individualized meeting or you would do an individualized meeting with an AT specialist. Um, we review how the product works for you and compare the features. And Asian A has put in our chat the demo line and also the link to our demo website. Um, so we typically, oh, oh, we typically keep these sessions really informal. Um, we like to have interaction and have fun. So we are um, asking you to please um, interact throughout the session today. Feel free to unmute yourself, raise your hand, type in the chat. Um, however you prefer to interact, um, we're going to be describing the pictures and things on the slides um, as a point of access for everyone, and then. Asian is also going to be reading um, what's going on in the chat so that no one is missing out on anything. And we're going to be asking a few questions of you throughout the session today, too. Um, so the picture on this slide is of a light bulb drawn within a chalk drawing of a thought bubble. So one of the first things I wanted to do is just um, share a picture of my own garden plot. This is my raised garden bed that I used last summer. Um, I don't know if you could tell, but I'm growing green beans here. I, um, when I was little, my dad always had a, a garden and he used to take me out of my wheelchair and dump me in the dirt and I would be responsible for um, poking the holes for the green beans in the ground. That was my very important job. So I always grow up with a love of growing um, green beans and just eating them right off the 
right off the vine raw. So this year I used my raised garden bed and part of my dog's kennel uh, crate that created a nice little trellis. So I wondered if we could just start out by talking a little bit about what you like to grow in your garden. Feel free to unmute or write in the chat any things that you like to grow in your garden. I know yeah, one thing that. I tried to grow oh. radishes. Whoops, sorry, Julissa. I also <laughs> tried to grow radishes this year, but this past year in the in the um in the photo, but they didn't come up. Cherry tomatoes, always oh, cherry tomatoes are great. Yep. Molly, what else? This is Julissa here. Um, our family really has a large garden. And last year we did a bunch of different berries as that's what my daughter loves to eat. So strawberries and raspberries and blackberries. And then along with cherry tomatoes and cucumbers and squash. Steven said greens and kale. And Jamie says she's thinking about starting one. Hi, Jamie. Hi, Jamie. I um, I really hope you get some good ideas on how to start your garden today. Hey, everybody. Are you? Yeah. Are you a first-time gardener? Yes. So my family garden. My grandma used to garden, and she used to take me out with her. But I have not ventured into it myself. So I'm hoping to get some ideas and some resources about how to get a raised garden bed or how I can start like a big pot garden. Yeah, yeah, we're definitely going to go over um, some raised garden beds and things today. So um, who else? Virginia what loves else to got? grow tomatoes, eggplant, zucchini, but the deer ate them all. <laughs> That's what happened with all of my, um, in the back of the ground of this picture, you can see my garden plot that's in the background on the ground. That's not the one that I tended to so much as the green beans, but a lot of that stuff got eaten by deer, lettuce, and uh, my green peppers. I really made me sad. Well, thanks for sharing, everyone. Um, I really do hope you get some more ideas of how to grow and things that you can grow. Uh, today so um just some topics that we're going to cover today we're going to cover um types of beds and indoor gardening um, options we're going to cover different types of gardening tools um, hoses and sprayers we're going to talk about some tools for seeding um, some AT tools for weeding i think we could all use some tools for that because weeds never end and then um the best part of it is um, for the harvest. So some AT products to help with um, gathering gathering your harvest and what you've grown. So um, just wanted to start out by talking a little bit about what makes a garden accessible. Um, as I was putting together this presentation, I recognized that a lot of different people use a lot of different words for um, their plots, their their raised garden bed. So for some people, a raised garden bed can simply be um, a rectangular box built out of two by fours, as in this picture in the top, um, that's about 12 to 18 inches off the ground and, and filled with dirt. This can, can help you control the soil quality and make things a little bit more easily manipulative, um, manipulated. Um, but for someone who, needed support with um had trouble bending or needed something um waste time these types of raised garden beds uh, don't typically work so when i talk about a raised garden bed i'm talking more of the type that you can see on the bottom row of pictures here um, the first one we have is a raised garden bed that is about um chest height to me in my in my wheelchair um, I can roll underneath it. It's got four legs, um, and you can grow about um, seven square feet of fruits and or vegetables or herbs or or flowers in it. Um, I had one of these the first year that I 
started gardening and um, I do, I, I really did like this garden bed. I wish I had known that a lot of people in the, in the do-it-yourself world um, recommended bracketing the corners of the garden bed um, to make it a little bit more sturdy. It does have a uh, weight capacity of 200 pounds and I tried growing some, um, some really heavy things in it my first year. And so between the, um, the watering and the heaviness, when I tried to move it at the end of the season, the whole thing fell apart. Um, so lesson learned there. I needed something with a little bit more sturdiness. Um, so the garden bed that I have now is the one that's in the second row. It's got um, very sturdy legs from front to back, which are more like a foot or two um, in length. And it's got two depths. Um, the bed itself has two depths. So you can plant something a little deeper on the bottom um, near the back of the garden bed. And then near the front, it's raised up a little higher to uh, grow something at potentially a different height. Um, I like this because I can access the garden bed on all sides. And I feel like the, uh, the legs, because they make up the whole side of the garden bed, are much more sturdy. And I'm less likely to knock into it or knock it over. Um, so those are some differences. There is definitely a price difference in these two. Um, the first one, you can get a garden bed like that for about $100. Um, the other ones are looking more at like $200 to $300. Um, the one next to that, in the, we have a blue cart with wheels. Um, this is a nice little elevated garden bed. Um, it is on wheels so that you can move it um, and has a rack on the bottom so that you can keep your gardening tools there. That's by a company called Sunny Days, um, which sells a lot of gardening products. And then in the upper uh, right hand corner, I have a, a vertical gardening, um, five tiered vertical gardening. Um, I guess it's like a mag rack. It reminds me more like a magazine rack. Um, and so some people prefer to grow that way and grow vertically. Um, so that's another option. Okay. And one thing that I did want to mention is that when you are, are looking around for these products, a lot of different terms are used. Um, some people, again, call them raised garden beds um, or ADA compliant or barrier free or wheelchair accessible, all of these will come up with different configurations of, um, of garden beds. So on your resource guide, I've given an example of each of these types that we've looked at. Again, they're just examples. Um, we're not endorsing any one product, just trying to kind of get an overview of what's out there. So if outdoor gardening isn't really your thing or um, you wanna start a little bit smaller, you can always start with an indoor garden. Um, I have two indoor garden products here that are kind of neat. The one on the left is called the Grow LED. It has a, um, a smart timer. You put your own pots in there so you can grow up to um, eight little pots. This is really meant for smaller herb gardens. It does say that you can grow vegetables, um, small vegetables, I would think. Um, so it has a light on it with a timer. It's 16 hours on, eight hours off. Um, really kind of takes the guesswork out of the lighting. Um, they do say that um, growing is faster, growing hydroponically this way. I have not tried indoor gardening yet, um, so I don't know. The other product on this page is called the Aero Garden. Um, this can grow up to six plants for up to 12 inches. Both of these indoor gardening products come with a 21, a 20 watt light. Um, this one actually, the Aero Garden comes with a place to put your plant food and your water and you can set it to vacation mode and it can basically take care of itself um, if you put enough in there. And it'll let you know when it's low, it needs to be watered and the, the uh, plant food needs to be put in as well. So that's a nice way to get started if you're not really sure what you're doing. Um, doing the indoor gardening might be a way to go. Um, 
so then um, thinking about if you do have a garden plot, what are some garden tools that are more accessible um, that you may be able to use? I found a couple of gardening tools that are extendable. Um, the first one on the screen on the left is called the Ergi shovel. It is a, um, that is a um, garden, um, garden rake, heavy duty garden rake. It's got an extra um, handle on the end to help with the ergonomics of it. The other one is by a company called Corona. Um, they make extendable garden tools. Um, they go up to 48 inches. So this one on the head of this is a is a rake, but they also have uh, holes and cultivators and weeders and different things that can attach and extend on to those as well. Um, so that may be a way if you're unable to bend over um, using something that's extendable um, will allow you to reach further without as much work and bending over. Um, looking at some hand tools, um, the first ones on this slide are from a company called Radius Garden, and um, they have a, these hand tools are ergonomically shaped and their handles uh, are shaped kind of like umbrellas, so they're very ergonomic to hold. Um, these come with a trowel, a cultivator, a garden fork, and a weeder set. Um, so we have these available through the AT program. Also on this slide is um, a product called the Easy Grip um, Gardening Tools. They have a handle that's at a 90 degree angle, so you can grab the handle uh, with your hand. There's also a support cuff that you can add to these products. So that's um, it comes with a extender and on the end of it, you can put the arm cuff that allows you to use your forearm for um, for gardening instead of trying to use your hand itself. Um, and those are interchangeable with all of the products. So the um, so you can buy, we have a uh, four, four piece set, I'm sorry, a three piece set of the easy grip tools with the 90 degree handles and then the support cuffs. Uh, these also come in a long handled version that you can see at the bottom of the screen um, that you can also add the support cuff to. Another, um, another product that this company offers is just the handles themselves that you can add on to your existing garden tools. Um, so if having that handle at 90 degrees is easier for you to hold on to, you can just buy the grips themselves and add them to your existing garden tools. Um, but I do like the, uh, the cup itself. I found when I was using that, I was able to uh, use a lot easier than trying to um, just use my hands because I have some fine motor issues. And so um, that may be helpful if you're looking to use more of your, your whole arm while you garden. Laura, one second. Um, yep. It looks like Steven has their hand up. Oh, yeah. There, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, thank you. I'm sorry to interrupt your wonderful presentation here. I unfortunately have to leave in five minutes to go to another for the Medicaid waiver program, the Zoom call. And so is there gonna be a recording where I can watch the entire thing, this meeting? Yes, we are recording right now, and we will send out the recording after the uh, the presentation today. Can I quickly share my things because I got to leave in five minutes? I, Absolutely, I'd love if you would. Yes. Okay, I I used to grow in the flower garden around my apartment, grow vegetables, and then they said you can't do that, so I set up a table on my patio porch got what they call grow bags. They're on Amazon, they're not expensive. 
and they're they're like a pot only and they're made out of cotton canvas type thing and they have worked well for the last few years for me so with them being on the table and then for example when i had to go into a, a nursing home for a while you know for about six weeks I had friends that came over, picked up the bags and took them home and cared for them until I came back and then brought the bags back. So that that was advantageous for my my handicapness, so to speak, you know. So everything you needed to grow was in the bag itself? Yes, the dirt goes in the bag. You can look them up on Amazon type in grow bag and they have handles on them and they come in various sizes. You can even get them big enough to grow potatoes deep in the ground and carrots. And they're usually black or gray colored. And then like that, those units you showed, the one with the cart with the wheels, they could actually sit inside of that. Mm -hmm. You know, or you could just use an old kitchen table or one of those half tables is what I have. Take up half space and then just pile the bags on there and they just grow up there and they grow better in those bags than they do in a pot, actually. Wow. We will so, definitely have to check those out. Thank you for letting us yeah. know. Yeah, is there... And I love that you shared that um, your setup really just involved kind of a, a folding table. I think, you know, when we talk about what makes your garden accessible, it's really what makes it accessible for you. And it doesn't need to be sometimes something high tech. It can be something low tech, like a, like a folding table. Um, now, if you're looking to have a community garden or something, you're gonna wanna look at the needs of everyone in that community. Um, you know, because sometimes I've seen accessible gardens that are built uh, without the input of people with disabilities, and then they turn out being inaccessible. But, um, you know, for personal gardens, finding those low tech things that work for you can be really important. Thank you for sharing, Stephen. I'm sorry you have to leave us, but thanks for, um, for joining today. We appreciate it. Thank you, and keep me on the mailing list or whatever. Okay. So I, will. I don't know why these are set up with overlapping times like this, but I guess that happens. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, okay. Well, thank you very much. All right. Appreciate all you all do. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Okay. So, uh, sprayers and hoses is another area where. Um, we can find some technology that makes things a little easier. Um, the big photo on this slide is of a, um, a fireman's hose. Um, and it's titled that because of the grip that it has. It's shaped kind of like a bullhorn. Um, and then it has a um, handle on the top that can be pushed back or forward um, to change the pressure. Um, these do have quite a bit of pressure in them, but they can also do like a fine mist as well. So they have different settings as well, and it's not all. Um, it, according to the marketing, it says that the, the pressure is enough to help you wash your car, or it could be enough for a, a light mist for a garden. I never used it to wash my car, but I used it to water the garden and it worked really well. Um, another one of my favorites for watering is, um, in the upper right hand corner it's a it's a a wand by melnor um called relax the grip and it um you attach it to your hose it has a uh, watering wand that's got eight um different settings and what i like about this is it has a mechanism on the top um where you can use your thumb to adjust the pressure up and down. Um, it just needs a little bit of movement from your thumb in order to get the pressure going and turn it back down. Um, so for some people who have problems with gripping, 
and aren't able to hold that nozzle down the whole time, um, this is a really easy way to just kind of turn the water on and leave it. And then you can be really focused on getting all the areas of your garden. Um, for me, trying to hold that down and then move the sprayer all over um, was, was a lot of trouble. But um, there are several different kinds of these type of watering wands that um, that just need a push of a button or something to get started. And then you can focus on a on a um, on watering your your garden, and then also um, looking at different types of hoses. There are a million different types of hoses out there, um, and lightweight ones tend to work better for some people um, who would have trouble kind of lugging a heavy duty um, hose around the, the garden. The problem with the lighter weight, um, the problem with the lighter weight hoses is that um, they're easier to puncture. Um, some of them have kind of a bungee cord material, um, and then so I had one the last gardening season, and unfortunately I went to uh, try it out again, and it sprung all sorts of leaks from being dragged around the yard. So that didn't um, that didn't hold up very well. The one that I featured on the slide is called the Flexilla. Um, so it's a lightweight core, it's a lightweight hose um, that's got a coiling mechanism within it. So it's supposed to be non kink. Um, I don't know if we can ever really say that any hose is non kink, um, but the way that it's coiled around itself, um, you're supposed to be able to pull it and uneasily uncoil. Um, these come and 50 foot, 100 foot, you can even hook them together and then have a 200 foot hose. Um, looking around and doing research, um, from what I've read, it seems to be a good compromise between um, being lightweight, but also being durable and lasting from season to season. Again, this is only um, an example, but um, definitely something to think about if lugging that hose around is, is hard. So seeding, um, I don't think a lot of people think about this part of gardening as much, especially when it comes to assistive technology, but there is technology out there to help you take the guesswork out of um, where to plant your seeds and how to plant them. Um, the first thing that we have is something called the seeding square. And this is a, um, it's just a plastic template that has different colors in it. Um, and it comes with a seed dispenser and the seed dispenser also doubles as a ruler. So you have um, on the side of this, this orange stick that comes with it are inches so you know how deep to put your seed. Um, but essentially the seeding square comes with uh, a template that's color coded. So for example, um, I believe when I did green beans, for, for example, those were um, coated yellow on the template and it told you how far to put them apart. And so then I would just put my seeds in all of the yellow um, circles or if I was doing cauliflower or whatever that might be in a red circle. So it kind of helps you to lay out your plot and know um, how far to put things apart. And similarly, um, there's also a picture of a um, of the Intervail. The company named Intervail makes a, a seeding ruler, just a very simple wooden ruler with um, some garden measurements written on it. Like for example, peas are at 12 inches, beans are at 12 inches, lettuce is at eight inches. So you can use this ruler, it's got holes in it and it comes with a poking stick. So, um, to poke in your seeds. And then in the far right hand corner is um is an example of a handheld um, seeder. You can adjust the top for the size of your seeds and how many you are trying to um, are trying to plant at once and that will enable that many seeds to come out. I have used these with my fine motor um, problems. Sometimes these need fine motor skills as well to manipulate them. So they may not be the easiest to use, but if you um, you look for hand seeding tools online, there are a variety of things that come up, including some um, 
some I'm trying to think of syringe type syringe type products where you can put the seed in a kind of a spring loaded uh syringe and then push it down and into the ground um so that's a good option for seeding as well so different things to just kind of take the guesswork out of planting i'm going to go to the next slide laura we did have a question um mary okay. liz asked um she just said i don't know if you have discussed raised garden beds yet has anyone worked out the cost of building wooden beds every few years versus a metal garden bed like is it vigo v-e-g-o that costs more but lasts a lot longer we did talk about that a little i'm sorry mary liz if you weren't on yet we talked about garden beds on the very first slide uh, and i was sharing that um in my first year of gardening, I had bought one of the wooden garden beds that were about $99 or so, um, and it really didn't last uh, over the over the season. I thought I've seen um, more videos now of those garden beds where people are reinforcing them on the corners with brackets um, to enable them to last a little longer and also weatherproofing them. Um, my experience, and maybe you can share too, is it lasted me about a season or two, and then the whole thing fell apart from just um, the soil being, I think I grew, it also had a, a weight capacity of 200 pounds. So by the time you get your soil in there, and then you've watered all winter, or you watered all, all season, mine just kind of fell apart in a big, big pile of dirt. <laughs> I don't know if that was your same experience. Um, so I was saying that I have, I had purchased, um, another garden bed, which was about $300. And this one, um, was meant for a wheelchair to roll underneath that You can access it from both sides and the, um, and the garden bed itself, um, uh, was not just on four legs. It was on, it was on two legs, but the legs were the entire width of the garden bed. So more like a table. Um, and less like a elevated planter. Does that make sense? Yes, that makes sense to me, being yeah. able to roll. And my issue isn't that I can't move my legs to get in close enough. I, I can stand and walk, but for me, it's always been the bending down or the kneeling. <laughs> right, right. We're going to have a few other things that we're going to show for kneeling and trying to trying to trying to do those kind of things. So, so stay tuned. Um, but thanks for sharing that you had a similar experience with the cheap beds versus the more expensive ones. You can buy metal raised beds as well. Um, again, it's like how raised do you need them to be? So um, there are some that come again, 12 to 18 inches off the ground. There's others that you can raise up a bit higher. It's all about what you need and the needs of your community. So um, weeding, weeding uh, is always going to be there, right? So we need some tools to deal with it. Um, on this slide, I found a couple products to help with weeding. The first product that I found is called the Weed Zinger. Um, so there are two pictures of this on the, on the slide, um, beginning on the left. It's a long, um, almost pogo stick looking device with a handle on it. Um, and a um, a place to put your foot at the bottom. So what you do is you step on this device um, with one foot. And if if you um, look on your resource list, there's more information about this. They have a very overly dramatic video about how wonderful this product is, but showing that children um, can do it, um, that it's easy to do. So you step on it, you twist, you pop the weed out and then it even comes with a backdrop um, target practice. So you can pop your weed into a garbage space, which I thought was quite funny. But um, that's a way that you can do weeding without having to bend over at all. So you can do it from a standing position. The other product that I found is called a Cobra Head. So this is just a very ergonomic hand um, weeding tool. Uh, it's got the ergonomic handle with the uh, um, cushiony, cushiony handle, and then the uh, the weeding device is like inside the the head, the blade itself, so not exposed and sharp. 
but that again is for hand weeding. Um, so I have yet to find some really great AT tools for weeding, but um, if you know of any other, other ones out there, please let me know because we're always gonna have to deal with weeds. Okay, here's the other tools, Mary Liz, that I thought you might be interested in when we were just talking. Um, I call these tending tools. I wasn't really sure how to categorize these, but these are just tools that can help with tending your garden. Um, the first one on the left is um, called the Gorilla Grip Kneeling Pad. This is a really thick, sturdy uh, foam kneeling pad. It's about an inch and a half. Um, you can buy them in all different colors. I like that it has a nice grip for carrying it. Um, so that can save your knees a bit. There's also um, lots of different types of garden kneelers and benches. So the one on this slide shown at the top, um, when the legs are folded down, it can act as a bench. And then if you uh, flip it the other way, it can act as a kneeler. And then you can also use the, uh, the legs to help you stand up. Um, this has a weight capacity of 330 pounds. So um, it can take quite a bit of weight. And then we have the um, the garden scooters, which a lot of people are getting into now and making more of. Um, the one that we have is is by Sunny Days. Um, this has a seat and a bin underneath to help um, carry your tools or um, whatever you might need to store in the bottom, and then you can sit and use your feet. Um, we did share some of these products with the community garden list. Spring, and I mean, I know the garden cart was one of the favorites. Um, we did get some feedback that they don't roll so well on wood chips, um, but I don't know anything that really would. So, um, but helpful for sitting to uh, to carry your tools and to tend to your garden. Um, and we have we bought a couple of these. One of one of them that we bought was extremely heavy. And came with a flat tire, unfortunately, and was a pain in the neck to put together. Um, so, you know, look into these carefully. Um, but we've found the one by Sunny Days has been um, been helpful to quite a few people. Okay, what are we doing? What time here. Any questions so far? Nothing. Okay. So you've done all the work and now you need to harvest. And uh, I know for me, one of the problems that I always had is where, how do I carry all this stuff that I'm growing now? Um, I would, um, I have a tray in my wheelchair and I'd put, put vegetables and things on my tray and then I'd find that they, they were rolling off and onto the ground before I could get them back to the house. So I was really interested in what assistive technology might be out there for harvesting and helping you get the fruits of your labor um, to your table, so to speak. Um, so the first thing is a, a harness with a harvesting bucket. Um, so you can distribute the weight across your shoulders and your back. And um, it's not all around your neck or on your shoulder. Um, the weight is distributed. Um, also pictured in the upper uh, right-hand corner is a three-liter berry picking bucket. Um, this goes around your waist. Um, I don't. I think it could be used for many things, not just berries. Um, and I like the way that that it attaches easily around your waist, leaving your hands free, and the rest of your body is free as well. And then um, there are many, many types of aprons and harvesting. Um, Think wearables, things that you can wear to help with carrying things and harvesting. Um, this particular apron is called the Roo, uh, as in kangaroo. So um, it has strings that you can pull out to easily let the produce out. Um, but there are lots of different aprons and shirts and things that you can use for gathering that you don't need uh, your hands in order to use them. Okay. So we're, we're a little bit early, um, but I'm wondering, did anybody see anything new today they hadn't seen before?
Hey, Janae, is there anything in the chat that we've missed? Nope. I was not aware of the um, the garden bags that Stephen told us about. It's really exciting. I this uh, is this is Jamie sharing again. I was just going to say I enjoyed the presentation. So everything that Scott showed me today um, was very new to me and is very encouraging that I can do this accessibly. And maybe it'll be a fun activity for me and my son to do together. That's yeah. Cool. And if there's any of these um, products that you're looking to borrow or needing to get your garden set up, Jamie, um, we do the device demonstrations. And so we'd be happy to to um, show you some of these products and, and have you borrow them for a short period of time, if that's helpful. Or if you're out there and you have a, community garden and you're interested in any of these things um let us know we'd like to work with you to um to create an accessible community garden as well oh thank you virginia asked what was the name of the hose that was on the slide was it the flexilla that was the flexilla yes okay and then um, Audra said, thank you for a great presentation. She works at Public Botanic Gardens. We we're trying to start a horticultural therapy program. This was very helpful. Great. Yeah, we'd love to talk more if, if you would like. And Tammy has their hand raised. Hi, everyone. My name is Tammy Black, and I'm from Manistee Community Treehouse Center in Detroit. Hi, Jamie. I know Jamie. <laughs> um, um, I, I'm chiming in because I do have a horticultural therapy program, and I also have a wheelchair accessible garden. So I would love if you guys could help me out with some of the products that, you know, people who um, garden in our garden could use and and make it easier for for gardening. I would love to uh, have you guys guide me, guide us through that. We would love to help. Absolutely. Yes. Absolutely. Um, our email addresses are on the resource guide, and are also at the beginning of the presentation. Jalisa, um, Ishanae, would you mind put dropping them in the chat? Yes, Tammy, I do have your contact information. I received your um, form yesterday, so okay. we'll be in contact with you. <laughs> Thank you, Tammy. Great, great. Thanks a lot. All right. And Mary Liz says, "Thank you for the survey of available tools. Makes it easier to find what we need to make gardening easier." And yes, I'm going to put the resource guide um, in the chat again for everyone to be able to access. Um, the products, the links to the products, and then also if you, if there was something that you were interested in and you wanted to request a one-on-one -on -one demonstration, I'm going to put that information in the chat as well, and Laura or another um, AT specialist can assist you with the demo. Mm -hmm. We'd love to help out. Um, is anybody aware of any other AT products that you didn't see here today? Um, I admit that I am not a master gardener. I have never grown flowers. So if you're a flower grower, I'm sure there are tools for that. Um, I've, I've seen that there are pruning shears and loppers. I'm not even sure what a lopper is, but um, it looked easy to use. Any other products? I'll have to check out those grow bags. Um, we do have a few minutes left, and we have a short survey that we um, would like people to fill out. It helps us to know that we're on the right track, but also um, we are federally funded, so it helps us collect some data for our funders. Ejene, are we able to put that um, survey in the chat? Yes, it is in the chat. Under training survey link. And in addition to all the gardening products that you've seen today, we have um, a full inventory of other assistive technology uh, 
available as well for demonstration in short term loan. Um, things for daily living, things for low vision. Um, we have AT for gaming, AT for parenting with a disability. Um, so we would love for you to contact us and see what we can help you with. If there's something that you want to get back to or um, are looking for an easier way to do in your life. Thank you so much for joining us today. If there aren't any questions, I think we'll wrap up. So I'll just close it one more time. Any questions? I have a question. These links that have been put into the chat, is there a way to get them sent to us maybe by email? Yes, after the, uh, the training, you're gonna receive a thank you email. It'll have all these links in the in the email as well. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Well, I hope this was helpful. I swear spring is coming. It doesn't look like it right now, um, but in a few short weeks, I think it's going to be here, and I'm excited to get those gardens started. Um, so we would love to help you out in any way we can. Thank you for joining us today, and we hope we'll, that you'll join us for our next uh, Tech Tuesday, which is on March 8th. Thank you, everyone. Bye-bye.